let me introduce you the fifth section of the video course. In the first video, we are going to learn the object-oriented approach to software design and how it is implemented in Go. Object-oriented programming relies on an entity called the object, which has associated data, called fields, and exposed associated behavior. In this video, we are going to talk about data and how objects are implemented in Go. Objects in Go are represented by structures. A structure is a way to create custom data types consisting of several variables called fields but accessed through one general variable. Let's look at a simple example. You have a passport or ID card that identifies you. It holds personal information about you, your photo, name, surname and the date of birth. You could store these in four different variables which is not very convenient if you want to store information about hundreds of passports, for example. So let's see how a passport can be expressed through a structure. First, we define the passport struct type, open curly braces and enumerate all fields, each from a new line. Now we have a brand new type. The usage is the same as if it was a standard type when you use a var keyword for declaration, but this is a bit different when you use the short assignment operator. Here we add curly braces after the type name and in case of the struct type it means that we initialize all fields of that structure with zero values. It is also called a struct literal. Another way is to initialize the structure with some explicit values. Let's see how it looks like. Note that the syntax is similar to how we were dealing with maps. We also place a comma after each field value. Let's run the code to see the result. Note what is printed and also zero values initialization here. Now we are familiar with the definition syntax and ready to access data. It is performed via the dot operator. Note that all struct field names start from capital letter. The same rule as for exported package variables applies here too. You won't receive access to fields whose names start from a small letter in the code located in another package. Such fields are called private. In our case, all fields are public. Publics and privates is a powerful tool of encapsulation. You can define some helper fields in your structure that you would not give your code users access to. Same use cases as were explained in the previous section on packages exported variables apply here. Let's move on. In the second section of the course, we were discussing pointers, special variables that does not hold values but just addresses of those values in memory. You can also take pointers to structures the way you did before using the ampersand character. Also, while the variable stores only a pointer to the structure, it still allows to access actual values of its variables for reading and modification at its original address with the same dot syntax. Another way to receive a pointer is a new function. It receives type as an argument, allocates memory for your struct type, zeros fields values and returns a pointer to it. This way you can avoid ampersands, receive a pointer in place and have a one line of source code economy. Some programming languages such as C++ change the field access operator for pointers to denote that we are working with pointer, not a value. In case of the Go language the syntax is the same, so you have to be careful having in mind if you work with the pointer or the value. This is very important because if you pass a struct value to function and try to modify it, the modification will happen with a temporary copy passed to that function. In the case of passing a pointer, you will modify the original value because you access fields by addresses. That's all on pointers. As you could see in our first example with Passport, Structs via encapsulation offers you a powerful tool for modeling objects. The object you model in a program is often referred to as abstraction. This is so because you always need only some subset of object features to work with. There is also another important principle of object-oriented programming implemented in Go called inheritance. The main idea behind this principle is to extend existing objects without rewriting the existing code. In Go there is a special kind of field called anonymous field that is denoted just by the struct type name without the field name. If there is such a field in your struct, 
it inherits all fields and methods of the latter. Let's code a simple example. We define a vehicle struct that stores the number of wheels and another struct truck that has a weight it can carry. But truck is also a vehicle, so the vehicle's behavior can also be applied to trucks. So we add an anonymous vehicle vehicle field to truck. This automatically gives us a possibility to have the number of wheels already added to the truck struct. Let's check it by creating a new instance of truck and checking the field. When you run the application, you will see that it works. Now some notes on modeling. In our previous case, if we were working with passports, for example accounting software, we won't care if it is printed on a paper or a piece of plastic. On the other hand, if we are making a software for ecology-saving organization, the physical material is actually what we care about, but not the person, we want more trees to be saved here. So talking about one real physical passport, we are talking about two different abstract models of passport intended to solve the problem of a software engineer in a certain domain. That is the principle of abstraction. During this video, we've learned how to work with objects and their data, and now we are moving to the next video to see another feature of the object's encapsulation principle, the behavior.